All right, all right. I am here at Philadelphia International Airport, and I'm on my way to see my lady in Canada. It's going to be a, <laughs> a wild ride today. I got two stops, and yeah, I'm going to see what it do. But I'll holler at y'all in a minute. Well, that clip you just saw was from December 2nd, 2020 at four in the morning. I was about to get on a plane to see my lady after what, 10 months, 11 months of not seeing her. And I was definitely excited. And I really don't, I don't share a lot of my personal life and my struggles, but I thought this was necessary. Okay, I have to go back to the beginning because I know you saw the title of this. And the beginning is around November 2nd or whatever, somewhere early November, I bought a plane ticket to go see my lady and it was through Google Flights and it was on United and on um, Air Canada. It was cheap, so it stopped. They had two stops. It stopped in Chicago and it stopped in um, uh, where else? Uh, Toronto, then to Ottawa, uh, where she lives. And you know, I know it's a pandemic, and I did my due diligence to make sure I knew of all the little rules and stipulations that we had to abide by for me to even go see her. And being as though I'm her spouse, then you know that made me qualify for that and I had to make sure I had all my ducks in a row. So she calls me Mr. Uh, research because I research a lot, you know, before I do things, before I buy things, before I go anywhere. And I thought I researched everything I could about Canada's rules about Americans or whoever coming to uh, this country during this pandemic so I went to the government website and they have all this stuff on it it is really confusing you know and um, I did what I could in not regurgitate what was the right word just absorbed everything I could off that site and also I went the extra mile the extra mile to go to um, call nurses uh, in Ontario to make sure I, you know, I'm following all the rules that I had all my paperwork right. And um, I talked to a, a few people from there and um, Air Canada. Talked to Air Canada about certain things. So my biggest question was, Will I be able to come to Canada for less than 14 days? Because the rule is you come there, you got to quarantine for 14 days, which really doesn't make sense because you could quarantine and still get sick out there after the 14 days when you are allowed to leave wherever you're quarantining at. So I, I feel it's, it's, it's not even a safe bet, you know? And what if you're asymptomatic? You know, it's just... Yeah, it's just... I don't know. It's, it's just difficult so my thing was I couldn't just leave the country for 14 days straight up not everybody can do that at like a random time like that so I made sure that these people were telling me oh yeah you can stay less than 14 days you just got to quarantine for the time you're there so from early November I'm definitely like you know, I'm excited. I'm like, okay, got my girl something for Christmas. And, you know, we can't spend Christmas together, but I could come there a little earlier. So that's what I, you know, that's what I did. I just prepared to go. Not really a doubt in my mind that I wouldn't get in the country. And that, that was just a secure feeling. I'm like, okay, I'm good. I'm good. I got all my paperwork. I'm, I'm, I'm great. Right? I thought. So as we approach 
the excitement is building. She's excited. I'm excited. Haven't seen her since January. And I actually, I think it's like the night before. I still didn't check like if anything changed. And nothing really did change. It just was like kind of misinformation that I'm leading up to. So, the morning of, so what I had to do, the flight was at 7 a.m. in the morning. So, you know I had to go to bed early or just stay up all night. So, I went to bed early and I woke up at 3 o'clock, had my Uber come at 4 and take me to the airport, Philadelphia International Airport to be exact. I was flying United out of Philly and going to Chicago so that first part you saw that's when I got to the airport and I go in I'm just waiting for the United people to come they're like you know they don't come out to like 430 so I'm just there and and let me backtrack I went to check in actually 24 hours before and it said that it was a problem problem with me checking in for the flight. And um, I had to, I had to, I don't know, just go see somebody when I went there. So that's, that's what I did. So I didn't know what the problem was. But what I did was, you know, I did my little thing, scanned what I needed to scan, uh, put my confirmation number in, and it told me to see the, you know, the representative, so seen the representative, and they just said, oh, you're missing a document, a document, what document am I missing, but I didn't see anything about that, nobody on the phones that I called, as far as the nurses in Air Canada, nobody said anything about me needing a document, so I'm like, what is this document, so the document I needed was, um, a picture of my wife's passport to say that oh I'm, you know she's a Canadian citizen so I'm like okay that never came up and then on the website it's so confusing it's like I don't know maybe that went over my head but I didn't see that that's one thing I didn't have so I wasn't even allowed to get on that flight to Chicago and I'm like and you know I felt like some of the agents there at United were being insensitive and sh and I'm just like yo I'm trying to see my lady you know that I haven't seen like I don't know I felt like it was a little insens insensitivity I know you you got to be straight up with customers but it's just like I don't know it just was uh I don't know I felt like nobody gave a shit basically so Basically, I couldn't get on that flight, so I had to get it rescheduled. I called United first. I called United Airlines first to see if they can like switch my flight uh, to later in the day or the next day. So they pushed me over to Air Canada. Air Canada tried to push me back to United saying, oh, they control the ticket. So I'm like, yo, listen. <laughs> it's like they just sent me over here. So a guy from Air Canada definitely looked out and had me on the same same time flight and everything for the whole trip the very next day. So mind you, I had to wake my lady up at four in the morning to <laughs> send me the stuff. <laughs> but um, yeah, um, I had it. I went and printed it out um, like later that day after I went you know, home. So something was saying to me, or maybe my lady was saying it to me, but I'm thinking if I was missing this piece of information, what else am I missing? Because this popped up out of nowhere. Maybe it's new. I don't know. But I, I called around. I was calling like, um, Air Canada. My lady's friend, Charles' friend, uh, new um, people that worked at like the border services and immigration and things like that and you know I had a few numbers to call so that day before a day before the flight I'm like okay let me I don't know, let me see 
like if you know what I'm missing. So I thought I needed like an extra document that needed to be notarized, but I didn't need that. And then um, my biggest question was, hey, can I stay shorter than 14 days? And I was getting, yes, you can stay uh, the first couple of times. But I had to be sure and ask more people. And some people wasn't even sure. But people were telling me, yes, you can stay longer than 14 days. But then we get to the manager and this lady, you know, not even a manager. I, I don't know who she was, but she just was like, no, you have to stay for 14 days. Like, that's just, that's the rule. That's what the health center rule is. You stay for 14 days. You can't leave. And if you leave uh, less than 14 days, you'll get a fine or something. And I can't afford that uh, with me trying to get into that country. I, I, I really can't have that on my record at all. So, um... It was reiterated once my lady called because she's like a firecracker with that customer service. And we really got the like the tremendously bad news that I couldn't I couldn't stay for less than seven, well, 14 days. And at this point in my life, I couldn't stay for 14 days. I just can't, you know. So we were getting misinformation the day before I'm supposed to leave. So we went through some scenarios like, okay, well, what if you come here? And she would have to actually quarantine for 14 days here too. And she couldn't just leave for 14 days to come here. So it was a devastating moment to find out that due to miscommunication, due to um, just... I don't know, just a lot of back and forth and a lot of, like, just misinformation from Canada's services or whatever. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> the airline and um, uh, immigration. Everybody should have been on the same page. They really should have been on the same page with that. And I felt like they definitely dropped the ball. You know, we definitely made an impact with management for them to correct that. Because a lot of people didn't know and it gave us that false hope of actually seeing each other this year. So now, we can't see each other this year. Yeah. And I had to hear my lady cry. We were talking for like four hours on this FaceTime. Like, <laughs> I had to hear her cry. And me, you know, I didn't cry, but I got mad and I'm kicking shit, wanted to break stuff. But it's like, I had to be strong for us. I definitely had to be strong for us. And I'm remaining strong. So right now, I'm supposed to be there. But what I did, I just... Did my best to calm her nerves, calm her down. And for me, I'm a content creator. I'm a, you know, video editor. I'm a fitness enthusiast. And I just buried myself into these, you know, <laughs> these things that I do. And I just stayed motivated through it. And I'm working out. Uh, a little heavier, eating better, and I'm just taking care of myself through this little stressful time because I know I will see her, but it that really hurt. That really hurt to be having that false hope due to misinformation, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So, it'll be probably a year. That I haven't seen her. Yeah. It sucks. Hmm. Yeah. But, um, I don't know. That's, I guess that's it. That's the horrible, concise story. It's just as concise as I can put it. It really hurt. Not gonna lie. And I don't even usually do this, but I can't lie. 
Mm. Yeah, but um, that's it, though.